Understanding how Render Man controls the emission of light is fundamental to being able to craft, refine and balance the lighting in your image or shot. And the majority of the lights in Render Man share a number of parameters and two very important ones are intensity and exposure, which control how much light is being emitted from the source and is also commonly referred to as the quantity of light. The light's intensity parameter in RenderMan doesn't respond like a real-world value such as wattage or lumens, but scales the intensity of the light in a linear fashion and is computed with a quadratic physical fall-off. The exposure, however, works in photographic stops, so if you're familiar with photography and cameras then this will make more sense to you, but in effect, every increment to the exposure will double the amount of light that is being emitted and work to the power of 2. In the same way, lowering this value by increments of 1 will reduce the light emittance by one stop and therefore halve the light quantity. The exposure parameter is also very useful when working with a DP or director who provides such feedback as please bring the top light down by half a stop or please increase the rim light by two stops. So let's dive into our test scene in Solaris and let's have a look at intensity and exposure. Okay, so here we are in Solaris, and before we do some rendering, let me just quickly show you how I've set this scene up. So, I have our dome light, as I described in the introduction, and all this is doing is it's just giving us a tiny bit of fill light to our entire scene, just so that when I press render, we're not completely black. And then I've already gone ahead and created a top light, which sits right above our robot. And I've done nothing to this, I've just left it at intensity 1 and exposure 0. So let's close that down and then let's fire up XPU and let's have a look at what we've got. Okay, so XPU is now up and running and let's have a look at the intensity first. I'm just going to close this down so we get that out of the way so we can see a bit more what we've got. So like I said, this intensity value, this is just a linear multiplier for the quantity of light that is being emitted. So at the minute by default it's set to 1. So here if I set it to 2, you can see that we're increasing our light and again if I increase it to 4 we're getting more light and again to 8. So really this intensity is a value which you kind of want to eyeball yourself it doesn't really have any real world values and at Pixar we can use anywhere between 1 and 100 in this intensity so don't be afraid to go a little bit wild with them and so you can see here that I've disabled a texture that's being applied to the light so if I just demonstrate that if I come back down to 1 now you'll see that this is how the intensity looks without the texture added to the light. But if I go ahead and activate this light, which we've kindly been supplied by Cave Academy, you can see here that the light contribution by the intensity is actually a lot less because we're using the texture. So you need to bear that in mind. If you've got a texture applied to your light, it will normally affect the intensity value. So again, I'll demonstrate that. If I turn it off, you can see here that we're actually getting slightly more light being emitted. So I'm going to leave this off for a minute because we're not going to get into texturing our lights just yet. So let's have a look at how we can use intensity and exposure together. If I just increase the intensity to 2, we've now got more light that's being emitted from our top light here, which is above our Reflectotron robot. If I want to then double this intensity, we know that all I need to do is increase the exposure by 1, which is effectively a stop of light. And now you can see here that we have actually got a double the amount of light. And again, if I want to double that again to the power of 2, I can actually increase it from 1 to 2. So now is probably quite a good time just to have a quick maths lesson. So before you all start screaming at the computer and running off, just bear with me and I'll explain to you the formula that works between this exposure and intensity. Welcome to this maths lesson. I'll be your teacher for the day. And this one is going to be about the quantity of light that any certain light is emitting can be described in the following formula. Intensity times 2 to the power of exposure. So what does that mean? I can hear you all crying. Well, let's have a look at some examples. So in this first example, what we're going to do is we're going to change our intensity to 4 and then we're going to lower our exposure down to 0. And this is what it looks like. And so knowing the formula that I just described, we can actually enter different values into here and get exactly the same render. So the way to do that is to go intensity to 1, and then we're going to stop up using our exposure to 2. And so this will give us the exact same amount of light that is being emitted from our top light. 
So we can either have intensity of four and exposure of zero, or we can have intensity of one and we can have exposure of two. And we know this because the exposure is the power of two and we can see that two to the power of two is actually four. So I hope some of you are still with me, but to summarize, having the intensity of four and the exposure of zero is the same as having intensity to one and the exposure set to two. So I can tell you're all really enjoying this maths lesson. So let's do one more example. Let's increase our intensity to eight. And this is how it looks. And then let me show you how you can then use the exposure and intensity to recreate this using the formula that we described earlier. So we're going to bring our intensity back down to one. And if you want to have a guess, pause the lesson here and then come back and then see if you get the exposure value right. And yep, you guessed it. We need three here. And so this is going to give us the exact same quantity of light that is being emitted. So again, if I go to eight and zero on the exposure, it's the same as if I go to one and three. And so let's now say that the director comes in and says that this light is too bright. And can we reduce it down by one stop? And we know how to do that because our exposure works in stops. And at the minute, it's set to three. So to reduce it down by one stop, we want to come down on the exposure to two. And so now we've applied his feedback and he's going to go away happy. So understanding how the intensity and exposure work together allows you to fundamentally understand how to physically and creatively balance the quantity of light in your scene. And like everything we're going to be looking at during this course, a lot of it is going to be based on real world photography and theory. And so the next question is, well, what values do you start with? And so this comes down to a variety of things, but mainly it's all down to matching your reference imagery. And at Pixar, lighters will work to color boards and other references provided to them. And as our productions are fully CG, we don't have to match backplates or lighting notes or data being captured on set. And so the need for gray and chrome ball references is not always crucial. But of course, the gray and chrome balls, along with a Macbeth chart, are crucial when it comes to balancing and matching your physically based render man lights. And hence, that's why this math lesson and understanding the intensity and exposure values is important.